All right. So very last topic in Math 116 um, is something called the difference quotient. And so in Math 150, so what we're hoping that we all take in the spring, we're going to learn about slopes of functions, all right? So let's just do a little, a little bit of conceptual practice, because when we get to calculus, it is going to be about the algebra, but it's also so much about the concepts and understanding the story behind it, okay? So let's start with this. Whoops, let's start with this. How would you describe the slope? It's linear. It is a linear function, but how would you describe the slope? Increasing. Okay, it is increasing. Um, what does that mean? Like what kind of slope does it have? Like, tell me about the slope. Yeah, yeah the slope is positive, right? So we could say that the slope is positive here. That would be accurate. All right. Um, what about if we had something like uh, this? Tell me about the slope. Good. Okay, so in particular, this slope is zero. Okay. Uh, tell me about the slope of this line. Yeah, we could say that M is negative, okay? Um, let's bring back one of our good old friends, the parabola, All right? Tell me about the slope of the parabola. All right, tell me a little bit more. What, how come it's all three? Like, is it all three at the same time? Like, what, what's happening here? Um, starting from the left, it's uh, decreasing. So it's a negative slope. And then it, whenever it hits the uh, vertex, um, it'll be zero. And then going up, it's positive slope. Okay, so if we were to use a little color coding here, maybe we say positive slope is green. Maybe if it has a slope of zero, it's yellow. And if it has a negative slope, we'll say that that's red. And yeah, I would agree that like in this one function, there's three different kinds of slopes happening. Like the slope, is negative, and then the slope is zero, and the slope is positive. So they're not, it's not like all three are happening at the same time, but at different parts, it might be slope is negative, and then zero, and then positive again. Okay. Um, let's do one more example, something that we've seen. So we have, what function is this? Mm, that is not the square root function. I got an arrow on both ends, so it can't be the square root function. Yeah, this one is going to be a log graph, OK? So I know these are all like little things that we've learned, but um, really what we're doing is saying all of these little skills, the more we can count on them, like, oh, I know what this is, the more accessible a lot of the other content we're gonna learn in the future is gonna be, all right? So this is a log function. Tell me about the slope. I mean, the slope would be positive, but there's also a point where it like um, flattens out. Mm, okay, so I would say that you are right. The slope is positive, 
as it gets to the top, it gets less positive, but it never actually flattens out. Okay, so it never actually gets to a slope of zero. It just gets pot, it's still positive, but it just gets less and less positive over time. I hope that's not your experience with math, that it starts out really positive and gets less and less positive as time goes on. But um, this graph, if we think about just the slope of it, it is positive, 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 less positive, less positive, less positive, but it never actually gets to zero, okay? All right, so we're gonna be spending like the first eight weeks at least, uh, in the spring talking about slope. That is a really big theme for us in calculus, okay? And so this last unit is really to think about what kind of algebraic skills do we need so that when we get to the slope section, that we feel ready to do sort of the process. Kind of like if you learned how to, um, multiply numbers really well, then that's something that you don't really have to spend as much brain power on when it, when you need to multiply, you're like, oh, I can just multiply, right? Sort of like a tool that you just have. And so the purpose of this unit or this one lesson is really to kind of just get us exposed to a process that we're going to be learning in the um, in the spring, but really thinking about it as a procedure, whereas in the spring, we're going to talk about it as a concept, okay? So the purpose of this is purely procedural, um, so that when we get to this in the spring, our lives will be a little bit easier, okay? So the directions will look something like this. Use the formal definition of the derivative to find the slope of the function, and you'll have a function here at any point x. And here's what you're gonna do. The first thing you're gonna write down is you're gonna write an LIM. Underneath that, you're gonna write H with an arrow to zero. Next to this, you're gonna write f of x plus h inside parentheses minus f of x over h. Wait for my, there we go, okay. So this right here, this whole equation that we've written, this is the formal definition. Okay. That is the formal definition. Now, let me ask you something. If I plug in zero for H right now, what happens to my fraction? Yeah, if we just plug in zero, we'll get f of x plus zero minus f of zero or f of x over zero. And when we divide by zero, that's a problem. Okay. So because we can't just plug in zero, we're gonna do some algebra and then at the end, we're gonna plug in zero. Okay. So Here's what we're going to do. We're going to write that limit part. And we're going to unpack this piece by piece. So f of x plus h is going to be in this sort of gray color. f of x will be in this yellowish color. And then we're going to have our h still on the bottom. Okay. Now I claim that you already know what f of x is, right? If you go back to the question, it tells you what f of x is. Now, let me ask you not what the answer is, but how would you find f of one? Like, tell me what you would do. What process would you do? I would substitute one in each x. You would substitute one in every x. Perfect. Okay. 
what if I asked you to do this, f of a? Substitute a in each x. OK. What if I said a plus 1? Substitute that in each x. Yeah, everywhere you see an x, you're going to put in a plus 1, right? So it turns out when we say f of x plus h, that means you're going to go to every single x and you're going to put in x plus h. Okay. So here's what this looks like. Let's draw our fraction line. And I'm going to take this yellow equation. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put x plus h. So I'm going to have 3x plus h squared, because it's not 3x squared, it's 3x plus h squared, minus x plus h, because it's not minus x, but it's minus x plus h, and then plus 4. And so this is what we have for our f of x plus h. Minus f of x, I get to write just the thing in the yellow. And what goes on the bottom? Um, it would be x plus h. No, sir. Just h? Yeah, it would just be h, right? Our original denominator was h. So that just gets to stay. OK, the bottom is going to stay, but the top is really where we're just going to be plugging in things. All right, now we need to do some distribution, some simplifying with our numerator, and let's see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and put the H on the bottom here because I know I don't, I don't have to do anything with that. All right. Here would be my recommendation, OK? With this x plus h, when I square it, if you were someone who forgets to distribute, I might just take the extra step to write x plus h times x plus h. Because the one thing we do not want to do is say x plus h squared equals x squared plus h squared. Right, so that's a really good example of when sometimes uh, if our foundational uh, algebra, we rush through things and we make those mistakes, it's now inside of a much bigger problem, which is going to cause us a lot more problems if we make those mistakes in, in this kind of problem. Okay, so we want to be really aware of things, um, these little, like, where do we tend to make those mistakes, All right? So minus x plus h plus 4. So all of this is still that like light gray blue situation. And what can I do to sort of clean up this second part right here? Distribute the negative sign. Perfect. Right, that's another huge place, really, really common place to say, oops, I just forgot, right? So minus 3x squared plus x minus 4. And all of this comes from the yellow part. All right. So we're going to distribute here x squared x plus h, x plus h, h squared. 
and we'll get 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. Now let's distribute this minus sign here. So negative x, negative h, and then that part from the plus 4, and then minus 3x squared plus x minus 4. all over h. All right, so we made it messier, but now it's about to get a whole lot better. What are some things that go away? Um, the 3x squared and then the negative 3x Perfect. squared. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep that list going. What else goes away? The uh, four and negative four. Yep, four and negative four. What else, folks? The x or negative x and then plus. Perfect. Anything else? Let's see the three x squared, the x and the h. I think that's it. So let's see what we have left. 6xh plus 3h squared minus h. All right. Remember when earlier I was like, well, what happens if we plug in zero for h and we plugged in zero for h and it, it was a problem because we got zero in the denominator? We're almost at a place where we've made it not a problem anymore. What can I factor out of the numerator? H. Yeah. So I factor out an H, I get 6X plus 3H over H. What super common mistake did I just make? Um, you didn't put a, a negative one. Mm. Right? I have a negative H. If I factor that out, I still have a negative one. Like I need to leave a place for it to go back to if I wanted to distribute it back in. Right? Okay. Now check this out H divided by H is one. And so we get the limit as H approaches zero of 6X plus 3H minus one. Now plug in zero everywhere you see an H. What do you get? Um, you get six X plus or negative minus one. There you go. All right, my friends. In this problem, we have just used the formal definition of the derivative to find the slope of the function. Okay. You don't have to understand what it means now. That's what we're going to do together in the spring. But this process, we can see, we can do the process even if we're not even in calculus yet. We can do the process because we know how to substitute things in. We know how to FOIL. We know how to distribute negative signs. We know how to cancel things out that like add to zero. We know how to factor things out. We know that something divided by itself is one, so we can reduce that. And we know how to plug in zero for a number or for a letter, okay? very classic kind of situation where, yes, technically this is calculus, but the process underneath it is all the algebra that we already know, okay? And so what we're gonna do for the last bit of class is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna practice a bunch, okay? So we're gonna do one together here. Let's see what we have. All right, so let's do this one right here. 
Uh, all right, so example one, we have f of x equals 2x plus 5. Now, let me ask you a question, because again, I think this is one you already know the answer to. Tell me about the slope of this function. Okay, I agree. Can you be more specific? Good, so the slope is two, right? Slope is two. Okay, so let's apply this formal definition of the derivative to this question and let's see what we get at the end. So the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. I'm gonna color this one that light gray blue situation and I'm gonna color this one yellow so I know where I'm plugging things in. All right. When I plug x plus h into this given function, what do I get? Uh, two times x plus h plus five. Good. I heard parentheses in the way that you said that, and I just want to make it really clear to everyone else that every time we substitute in an x plus h, we should have those parentheses there. Okay. So this corresponds to that part. And minus 2x plus 5 is the yellow part. The bottom is just going to be h, so I don't have to do anything with that. All right. What do I get when I clean up that blue term there? Uh, 2x plus 2h plus 5. And then for the yellow part? Negative 2x minus 5. Perfect. All right. So we did some distribution. All right. Let's see, I see a 2x and a negative 2x that adds to zero. I see a five and a negative five that adds to zero. So I'm left with 2h over h, which h over h reduces to one. And so I'm left with the limit as h approaches zero of two. When I plug in zero for H, what do I get? Um, two. Yeah. I know that seems like a weird question, right? Because there's no H's. But if we think about like, where would we plug in the zero, then the answer is nowhere. We would plug it in nowhere because there's no H's. So that means we only have a two. Now at the beginning of this problem, I said, hey, tell me about the slope of this, right? It's a line. I know you know the slope. I know you know the slope is two. But when we did this formal definition of the derivative, we also ended up with two, okay? That is not a coincidence. In fact, I argue that if you had a function like this, and you did the formal definition of the derivative, what would you get? as your answer. 
negative one seventeenths. Yeah, you would get the slope of that line. Perfect, exactly, Matt. Yeah, it's, and that's something that like, when we get into the thick of the calculus, if you ever see a linear function and you know that slope is always the same, you don't have to do all of this because you can say, hey, I just know the slope is two or hey, I know the slope is negative 1 17th, okay? Where it gets a little trickier is, and let me scroll back up for a moment, it gets a little trickier when we're looking at nonlinear functions, functions that change their slope, right? And so when we described the parabola slope, it was like negative slope, zero, and then positive slope, right? That's like three different kinds of slope. Or when we looked at the natural log function, they was positive, but it was all different depending on where you were at. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's why we're gonna focus mostly on ones that kind of look like this, like a quadratic one, just so we can really get this technique down, okay? All right, so the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That is our formal definition. We've got our f of x at the back end, but we start the numerator with the f of x plus h. So what I'd like you folks to do is this. I'd like you to, I know this is like a lot of typing out, but in the chat, I'd like you to type out what f of x plus h is and send it to me in a, like a direct message, okay? So go ahead and find f of x plus h, all right, for this f of x, this function. See what you get, type that into the chat, all right? So we'll take a few moments just to find the f of x plus h. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're ruining the surprise for everyone here. Just kidding. All right, so let's make sure that we're getting something similar here, right? Whether you choose to go ahead and write it as negative x plus h times x plus h like Dallas did, or you can write it as negative x plus h squared, like some of you are sending over, that is absolutely fine, okay? So either way, at some stage, it'll be nice to see those as sort of x plus h times x plus h, and then minus x plus h plus three, right? That is sort of the hard part of this question, the challenging part and then minus the function that we're given, negative x squared minus x plus three. Okay. Now I would say what makes this particular question a little bit trickier than the first one we saw is there's a lot of negative signs, right? So <clears throat> I get a lot of students who are like, do I have to write all of this out? And I'm gonna be that person who says, yes, yes, you have to write this all out. Okay, being able to see the process here of how you get from one line to the other is really important to me. But I also think that it leads to fewer mistakes as you're trying to like expand things, okay? All right, 
So let's see, negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared minus x minus h plus 3 plus x squared minus x plus 3 over h. So I've distributed, I've expanded, I've thought about those negative signs and distributed them. All right, and I start to think about what goes away. Because at some point, things like a lot of terms should go away, right? So in particular, I notice that this negative x squared and the positive x squared, that goes away. Does anything else go away? No. No, okay. So then we get negative 2xh minus h squared minus x minus h plus, well, I guess I could combine some things. 3 minus x plus 3 over h, which is negative 2xh minus h squared minus 2x minus h plus 6 over h. Hmm. All right, so remember when we're doing these questions, at some point, a bunch of stuff should cancel out, okay? And more significantly than that, let me go back up to the, the first problem we did real quick, okay? So when we did this problem, we were able to cancel out a lot of things in the numerator. And then what was magical about what was left is every single term had an H, right? Every single term had an H. That meant we could factor out that H and then reduce it with the numerator. That's actually a sign that you're doing something correctly. All right, that once you get to here, if everything has an H, you're good to go, okay? So how come I still have a bunch of terms that don't have H's, right? I got all the way down to here and I'm like, oh shoot, this is not looking good. Let's backtrack, right? I distributed all my signs here. I distributed my signs here. Negative, negative x squared is a plus x squared. But you know what? Negative, negative x is also a plus x. And negative plus three is gonna be a minus x. Right? So even though I did all this work and I was like, oh crap, I'm not going to get everything with an H. If that happens to you, you probably just didn't distribute correctly, just like I did, right? See how easy that was? Like, I'm going along with this. You're just writing things down. We're all just kind of working through it together. It's so easy to make that sign mistake, right? So if you realize that the H's are not factorable, go back up to that really messy line. I bet there's just a sign mistake somewhere because now we have negative H and positive or negative X and positive X and a positive three and a negative three. Now we have a bunch more things canceling out. And in fact, in the numerator, oops. I just have this, right? So it's not the end of the world to make the sign mistake, but it is on you to check for that, right? So now let's look at this numerator. We've got every single term has an H, so I can factor that out. I get negative 2X minus H minus one. Now I can reduce and I get the limit as h approaches zero, 
of negative 2x minus h minus 1. And when I substitute in 0 for h, I get negative 2x minus 1. All right. Now, again, in the spring, we'll talk about why this is the equation for the slope or what we call the derivative. OK, but what I want us to focus on right now is can we accurately work through this algebra independently? OK. All right. So. I'm actually gonna leave these two here as challenge problems, all right? If you're like, I feel like I get the hang of this, I'd like to try something a little bit more challenging, you're welcome to try example three and example four, okay? Um, but let me see if I need to make a modification to the quiz. Okay, so you should be good to go for the quiz. Again, these are more like if you're like, I would really like to get a head start on some of the you know, harder algebra. I really just wanna practice the more complicated algebra. That's absolutely fine. Um, but when we get to 150 in the spring, then we'll really learn how to do some more of these. Okay, but I will tell you, you do have the skill set to be able to work through these right now if you wanted to, okay? Um, so we are going to stop there.